So let's frame this up because we're all busy and it's hard to keep up on the news, but let's, let's oversimplify what happened here. FBI got possession of a laptop in 2019. Hunter Biden, being the idiot he is, took this thing into a computer shop to get fixed. This dude comes across some shady material, gives it to the FBI. The FBI sits on it. October, or I believe it was fall of the following year around the election, right? Um, this dude realizes he made a copy of it, which was the funny part. So there was two. There was two. So the FBI took one, and he was like, well, before he gave it to him, he made like a duplicate, right? In this, there were blatant, obvious, you know, information that showed a potential tie to, you know, foreign dealings, including Burisma. As we know, Hunter was on like the board of Burisma, a, a notorious um, organization in, in Europe that is corrupt and, you know, th with the ties to Ukraine and all these other things, right? Um, so the FBI has it, doesn't do anything. So finally, this guy gives it to... Um, Giuliani, and then Giuliani, Giuliani gives it to the New York Post. In it, there are emails that have since been validated talking of all these potential dealings. And to oversimplify it, if a, a guy who's about to become the president of the United States, if there is a chance he's been corrupted and has basically been bought by another foreign government, that is a major cause for concern for obvious reasons. Whether that is actually true or not, people had the right to know of the existence of these materials right before they casted their vote in November. That is obvious, right? If you said, all right, there is a chance that this guy is getting bought out by some corrupt Ukrainians as well as another dealing with China, which, is, which was included in all of this as well. You remember the 20% for the big guy? That was a Chinese corporation. Biden's business partner went to the FBI gave them all of this because I think they had a falling out and he was like, all right, F this guy. I'm going to go to, I'm going to, I'm going to turn myself in, but I'm going to throw them under the bus at the same time. Met with the FBI, closed doors, gave them all the details, all the, you know, here's text messages, here's voice recordings, here's this, here's that. You know what the FBI does in response to all of this? They reach out to Meta and X and say, there's going to be a Russian disinformation story breaking very soon. And you need to know that because it's we've conf we have intel that confirms it's definitely Russia disinformation. So you need to squash these stories immediately because it'll it could have a huge impact on the election. Which I would say if it, if it actually was like a Russian like if that was real, one could make the argument that yeah that needs to get like immediately put out that this is not real because there are real dangers to the opposite of this. If you just say hey free reign anything goes, people can manipulate all kinds of stuff to to you know insert propaganda. So it's not like there's not an easy solution to this. But they had no, inf no intel at all that there was any R Russian collusion case. They, they had taught, this was their, they loved, this was the go to. They did it in 2016, never fucking happened. It's like, it's like, oh, because everyone will believe it. Everyone thinks like the Russia is this like crazy, like CIA state and they can do all these things and they're, you know what I mean? So, oh, just call it Russia disinformation and everyone will buy it, right? So that's what they did. Zuckerberg even had a Freudian slip when we went on Rogan before this letter a long time ago and said, yes, they called me immediately and was like, make sure you squash this because it's fake, right? So what, that, what did they all do? They tried to break the story. Anyone who posted about it, what was this, weeks before the election, wouldn't, it didn't get the time of day. People's accounts were shut down. They were, they were canceled. YouTube creators, you can no longer monetize your content. It was an immediate, overwhelming response to squash this because imagine if you're a Democrat, this, is, this could be devastating. Our guy might be in with the Ukraine, you know, some shady Ukrainian business as well as China. Not good for business. He lost in Georgia by 10,000 votes. You're telling me if this had not be allowed to be circulated like it should have been, which has now been validated as true, the, the, the emails in the laptop, the potential corruption, you know, they haven't been able to prove that there was a 100% connection. But you can deduce from all of the things in here, you know, the 20% for the big guy, my, my, the text that said, my dad is sitting here right now. Are you guys going to do this or not? Or there's going to be consequences. Yeah. Like, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to say or there's a pretty damn good likelihood that something shady is going on and that this guy who's now the leader of the free world might be corrupted by some type of foreign entity. That's a reasonable statement to make regardless of your political affiliation. And if you don't, if you're not willing to acknowledge that you're, you have the strongest case of confirmation bias of all time, and you need to check yourself 
because I know you, if you want the Dems to win, that's fine. But if you can't actually see this for what it is, that's another thing we need to get past is the, is the insane confirmation bias that we all live in. Um, and we just, you know, entrench our positions and it's like, no, I can't be wrong. It's like, this is so fucking obvious. So that's one. He admits it. The, the people that were the conspiracy theorists is so Zuckerberg now a conspiracy theorist too? <laughs> the guy who owns Meta? You know what I mean? All right, I'll, I'll pause. What do you got, Tony? Response. No, I, I mean, you and I were talking off air. I think, I think we're you and I, because I, everything here, like, agree. And the confirmation bias, agree. I think the, the spot you and I may be able to discuss this more thoroughly is, and, and it's typically the way my brain works, which is a little more, like, zoomed out. Because I, as much as I stay off social media, I'm certainly not the personality to just put my hole in a head and not listen. But I, I try to go kind of maybe a little more back back door into the issue. And with this one, as soon as you said you wanted to talk about this, like, and, and you and I have discussed this before is like, this isn't unique. Like, and, and I told you right before we came on air, like misinformation, like, and, and here's where we may disagree a little bit. Like right now, I will, I will say straight up the democratic party right now, what they're doing to mass media is embarrassing. And it's, it's a complete degradation of our, our, our country's values. And I think the freedoms that we were founded upon, but what I have to caveat is like, this has been done by both Democrats and Republicans for decades and centuries. Now, the platform has changed. It, you, it started with, let's say, newspaper, then it went to radio, then it went to television. What we saw now is there's internet and now there's social media. So what has happened is wherever the eyes go, and here's where we could rate to, uh, relate to our conversation with like friend, or what was, what's the guy's name that was at Anheuser-Busch? Oh, Anson Frerichs. Anson yeah. Frerichs is that, and, and here's where I not even want to be careful, but the name you put to it, put whatever name you want. Some people call it deep state. Some people call it, um, let's call it the powers that be that there is, I, I, there is a group of powerful individuals behind governments that actually, I think makes a lot of the, the power plays that happen in our world. So what's happening here is that it's actually whoever is a part of the establishment is the one who does the manipulating, but that's not just unique to the Democratic Party. Do you know what I mean? Like, look at something, I'm sorry, like the Iraq war, like 9-11 yeah. was a tragedy. Well, hold on, Iraq war, 75% mm -hmm. of Congress voted for it. Oh, I know. 75%, oh, I know. That, that was not a Republican thing. Well, now, obviously, right, Bush right. I'm just saying the channels though, if you look at what happened with like, like what Fox knew, like no, no. if you go back and review what was being said then, it'll make you vomit because there was so much just well, bullshit. And that of course out. goes into like, you know, of course, it was it was justified at the time by WMDs, right? This is going to be a rogue state actor. He's got WMDs and he's going to deploy them because he's just he's the dude's right. a maniac. Right. That was the justification that was sold to the public. The intel's was actually reporting that. So the, cr the crazy part about that is like, who is driving the false intel? Well, that, you know and, what I mean. And, and, and that, that gets to the bigger picture. And that's what I. That's what of I, the big state exactly. And then it's like, you know, and and let me be clear. Both sides of the aisle, for the most part, I hate politicians. I think there's some some ones that are there that are doing it for the right, right reasons, but I think either it attracts that corrupted individual already, or they get there and they see behind the curtain and they go, oh, this is how it's it works. And they go, hey, man, you're going to get really rich, but you got to play by the rules, and here's how you're going to get rich. And like, you know what I mean? I, I think that there's a portion that that's how it goes. So I, I kind of hate both sides, to be honest with you. And, and, um, and what I told you is, and, and it's actually by no means is what you said, do I look at and be like, bear, that's a positive because that, that quite literally is, like I said, the degradation of like literally the, 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 the structural integrity of our country. But there is a side of me that like the silver lining is that you can view this as People have access to more information now than ever. Now, with what you just said, you have to be careful because if all the information people access is bullshit, then you're you're just brainwashing people. But what I will say is that even more than say 20 years ago or 40 years ago is if you look deep enough, even if it's Google, even if it's Meta, you can there there are parallel systems being created. Now they're one in a few. Like X is a good one now since Elon, but like even DuckDuckGo is a search engine. Uh, Rumble is a YouTube like. Now they have nowhere near the eyes that YouTube has, that Google has, but what's happening is parallel systems are being created where these bullshit propaganda campaigns, people are sniffing out now. So the silver lining is that people are waking up and that's why I actually think the, the, the conversation has to be had more and more because actually once people, once people open their eyes to it, it becomes silly. You see the same tactics being used and I'm sorry, COVID, there's some things happening right now I won't get into that like smell eerily similar to what started COVID. Like the same 
playbook literally keeps getting rolled out over and over. And that's what like I, I, I wrote down before we came in because I love this quote. Edward Bernays in 1928, he was the guy that founded public relations. So even us now, we use like a PR for like PR has become a, a very common thing we talk about. In 1928, he, he is quoted saying, the, the intelligent manipulation of the masses is an invisible government, which the true ruling power in our country use, or which is the true ruling power in our country. Like, and that, that to me just showed like, this has been going on forever. And as much as right now, and that's why I love your passion about it is like, it's coming to a head. And I actually think it's like a monster and it's like death throes trying to like cling and you see the desperation now. And I'm sorry, it is like, there is, there is one side that's very desperate right now that the truth is out the window and it truly is just like you said, how can we confirm our position over and over? Well, do you see what MSNBC just did with Rogan? No. <laughs> they cut up oh. a video of him uh, yes, I fake did. singing praise for Kamala Harris. Do you know who he was singing praise Tulsi for? Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard. The person who they're saying is a Russian operative she and is on a terror watch list. Terror watch list. A former Democrat that just endorsed Trump. They took sound clips of Joe Rogan this is MSNBC. This shows they have no moral compass at all. It's win at all costs, do whatever it takes. And then they spliced in clips at the end of him saying Kamala can win because, like, the media is, you know what I mean? And they, they mash those two together. Are you kidding me? That's the media I'm we're dealing with. Him, it's know. insane. No, I don't, I don't. Is he? Is he going to sue him? Or they, they took did. it down, like, he immediately. Did. He sued him. At least Good. the last time I, hope, I saw him. I hope he sues million, him into the freaking Stone dollars. Age because that, that, do they think they're going to get it? And it goes to show you how reckless and how bold they are. Because do you think in the modern internet, the, I mean, Joe Rogan's going to remember what he said. He's going to see it and be like, I didn't fucking say that. What? Um, so it shows you the audacity they have. It's like just shotgun blast up. Just hit them from as many angles as you can. Misinformation. 